Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Josh, and welcome to Advantage One RV. Today we have coming in a two-slide Flagstaff front living room with rear bedroom slide, which is pretty nice. Now, Flagstaff and Rockwood, if you weren't aware of, they're literally the same thing from the same people. We're a Rockwood dealer down at Haylet RV, where I spend most of my time. I'm probably going to slip and call this Rockwood at some point. Apologies. Overall, it looks pretty decent. I think it's a really good park-friendly model because there's like there's no slides over here on the door side. If you wanted to like park it somewhere and build a deck onto it, you could. But at only 6,970 pounds dry weight, it's actually something that's pretty darn towable as well. Um, one of the things I always pride myself on is if I see something, I say something. So as we step inside, I'm going to show you a little glitch I found with some flooring. I don't think it really stops you from camping but I do think you deserve to know about it before you show up here or driving from so many hours away and finding out, ah, you're just, you suckers, you got me. You're just like everybody else. That's just not how we do business here. So first, I just kind of want to give you a, a general pass of the living room space. We're actually facing the front of the trailer. Uh, a lot of things are rear living rooms. This is a rare instance of a forward living room, which is something I actually really like. And it's weird to me that there's not more front living rooms out there, that they're not more popular. I can only assume it's because you can't put quite as large of a window, typically, on the front wall. Um, so it just doesn't, I don't know, maybe it just doesn't have the saying pop or something like that. I, I don't know. But as you can see, overall, it looks fine. And the RV is most definitely perfectly campable. And the thing is, there's a spot on some flooring back here. But if I didn't point it out, I mean, you would notice it, but it doesn't, like, it's not stopping the camper from camping. Like, this floor right here is compromised a little bit. Um, like, I, I can walk, I can walk all over it, and there, I'm already past the spot. Now, you didn't see the floor sink under my feet, you didn't see any kind of severe buckling, and this is, like, the softest spot. I can straight jump up and down, I can do jumping jacks on that, and it's fine. And almost none of it shows up on camera. So I hope you appreciate the fact that I am pointing that out for you uh, because that is the kind of thing that if I just, I could have just glossed right over it. I could have done some pictures and some video. You would have been none the wiser. And a lot of people are buying stuff sight unseen right now for some pretty top dollar money. I am not going to smoke screen somebody like that. I'm not going to sacrifice our integrity by doing that kind of business. I do think it is not a major deal. I think that you can totally perfectly camp in this. I don't care if you're a bigger person than me. I'm about 200 pounds and I, I can feel it under my feet. But like I said, it's not buckling or anything like that. So take that information, do with it what you will. In the meantime, let's keep rolling here because there's a lot of good stuff, guys. Like those are true lazy boys. That is something that Rockwood did for you. I told you I'd do it. This Rockwood Flagstaff, whatever. They did for years, and you very rarely see much of any of it anymore. But notice how even those chairs are strapped down in transit. That's a cool thing. That's a really good indicator that somebody was, like, really on top of being careful with the RV, that they didn't want to have the chairs banging around in transit and all that. Like, they had some coverings on the sofas here, and I can see where there's a little bit of wear on, like, that sofa arm right there. But it's pretty minor. You know, uh, it's the... Is it important to you? I don't know. That's why I'm pointing it out so that you can make the decision. It wouldn't stop me. The money was right from looking at something like this. You know, I've always bought used cars. I've always bought them knowing they're not perfect. But something like this, you know, would you drive it? I'd drive it, you know. <laughs> the entertainment there straight across from the recliner station. And uh, over this way, this is, oh man, I missed this. This was called the uh, the hickory cabinet decor option. I don't remember the other one because I loved hickory so much. We stocked a lot of it down the street at Haylet RV on our Rockwoods, and it's always really spoken to me. It's a little bit lighter, but still warm. And that is begging for a pair of like breakfast bar stools, that huge counter space right there. I really want to do something like that. Um, actually, something else we should do while I'm thinking about it is show you a lot of the storage here. Now, there is a giant removable countertop extension here that we'll get to peek at in the closet, but just kind of whipping you around all the storage space real fast. The oven doesn't look like it was ever really used. And you'll find a lot of extra overhead storage th like above the recliners, over here above the sofa, a bunch of little good things like that. We've 
I've done about two or three 360s around this living room now, haven't I? Big atrium windows around the freestanding table and chairs. All day night shades through the uh, living room here. That table does have an extension, by the way, if you need to actually fit four adults. Ooh, I just spotted one other little thing. A little bit of wood glue would probably help here, but it looks like that is kind of just pulled away a little bit. Just a little peek down in there for you. Now, you haven't really seen a pantry. This floor plan has a little kind of angular hallway pantry here. And uh, just the way she's parked, the door wants to use the force and close itself over here. By the way, if you ever want to cheese off a whole bunch of nerds all at the same time, and I consider myself a nerd, that is a term of endearment, mind you. I am Josh, the RV nerd, after all. Is uh, show somebody a picture of Patrick Stewart and tell them to use the force, Harry, and then sign it Gandalf. <laughs> That's a way to, to get four fandoms all worked up all at the same time. Now, this is a dual entry bed and bath. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you have a guest maybe on that sleeper sofa, um, the, uh, you know, or if you, I don't know, you're sleeping right on the side of the bed, you have to hop in and out. Everybody can have some privacy in here. The uh, big vent fan up top is nice. Although this is, I, I don't know, is that an air freshener? The, the, the Mr. Oil Express Lube thing? Like, I, I think it is actually. Now that I touch it, it has the feel of like an air freshener. That would make sense. Some of those oil change type places will do a nice little thing like that for their customers. Now the uh, ceiling here is vaulted. Like if you look at it in comparison to the shower, you see how it does grow above the shower a little bit. So you actually have some decent headroom in there. And getting that door out of the way, kind of like in the hallway, there's a large cabinet over here. That is a really sweet amount of linen space right there. So if you got big towels, beach towels, toiletries, all kinds of stuff. Now this is a 60 by 80 true queen bed here in the uh, bedroom. If you were willing to sacrifice the side stands inside of the bed slide, you could bump up to like a 70 by 80 king bed. Uh, there is easy lift storage below that. You see uh, some full extension drawers down there as well too. That is one of those things that this group, the Rockwood Flagstaff group, has been very good at for a long, long time. But some additional dresser space here, and they put their closet across from the bed instead of on the rear wall. It helps keep the whole RV a little bit shorter. Giving you a little peek inside there so you can see all the hanging storage, you're going to see a couple things. The extra large countertop extension, you're also going to see the original factory outside RVQ grill and little work table that comes with it that look like they've never even been out of the camper. And I'll tell you what, big patio awning on this thing. I, I mean, normally I like it when a patio awning covers both entry doors, but this thing has so much sidewall coverage that I don't think they, they could have. They would have had to do a split awning, which also would have been pretty awesome, but it kind of puts a seam right down the middle of your campsite. Now, uh, you remember inside, the original factory grill and everything is still present and accounted for. That's where it would get mounted and hooked up, like those little bug screens on the furnace intake and exhaust there. Interesting little thing, a little mini fridge squirreled away underneath the kitchen counter in an area that on the inside, you wouldn't really be able to get to it. And I'll tell you what, whoever owned this most recently, they did a good job of keeping on top of their care, maintenance, and upkeep. The skin is still gleaming. Um, it looks like the nose has probably been exposed to some serious sun at sun, some point. That's hard to say. Sun at some point. There we go. Because it looks like all the decals on the nose have basically just been pressure washered off. But it's funny. When you do that, doesn't it look good? It just looks clean. It just, it, you know, not so many Nike Adidas swooshes all over the place. Sometimes it's not a bad thing. I, I'm a fan of minimalist graphics myself. Uh, the slide awnings are looking really good. I don't see any serious degradation on those. They are a couple years old, so, you know, sometimes water gets down that awning tube and leaves a little signature, but I don't see any tears or snags. And the underbelly, by the way, this is uh, enclosed and protected. So if you are towing it, you have a little bit of extra debris guard down there. And if you are going to be uh, doing some extended season camping, it's just a little additional protection you're going to like. You might have noticed four corner power stabilizer jacks. We've got, of course, that big power awning, power tongue jack. And then over here, between the two slides, is an interesting little space that I think you could do some interesting things with. Uh, you've got yourself a little outside utility shower and all of our hookups right above the stinky, uh, stinky slinky sewer station right there. But maybe it's a little too wide. It almost, especially with that outside camp shower right there, almost looks like maybe you could actually put up some kind of little 
removable curtain situation to have a little outdoor cowboy camp shower. Maybe you need to rinse down, maybe you've been swimming in a lake or something like that, and you don't want to smell like turtle slime when you walk into your camp or anything. I don't know, every now and then it is nice to get yourself all cleaned up and washed off there. Now, almost any new RV is backup camera prepped. This one's not, but the good news, just down the street at Haylet RV, uh, we do have uh, backup camera mounts that can basically integrate onto one of those rear clearance lights. So if you're looking for upgrades like that, if you're looking for accessories, remember, just because they're not on this camper doesn't mean we wouldn't have the chance to get it done for you. Thankfully, the weather gods are shining on us today. Um, the roof overall looks pretty good. The membrane looks all right. It looks healthy. I can see where it's definitely had some sun exposure outside that max air vent cover there looking a little newer. There are a lot of seals here, though that are definitely, they're at a stage where uh, you're at a point where there's definitely some, what do I wanna say, like touch up, touch ups, that's what I'm looking for. And I can see where it's had some potentially in the past around the skylight, but it's definitely in need of some now. Like I don't see any overt leaks, but you see where it's starting to kind of crack a little bit right there. That's when you wanna do a touch up bead. Now over here in the skylight, it's already had some serious touch ups done on it and it looks fine, but as I, touched up seal starts to crack that's when you need to do a full peel and seal so i don't see anything major up here i see an afternoon's worth of uh you know self-leveling die core and some non-sag sealant around the sides by the way uh do you know the difference between uh self-leveling and non-sag random tip of the day lesson here for you self-leveling sealant you lay on pretty thick and it'll, it'll like squish down and spread out over time. Like pancake batter is almost like when you pour pancake batter, it will sort of act the way a self-leveling sealant will. Just self-leveling sealant does it a lot later and it doesn't taste near as good. Trust me on that. <laughs> Non-sag sealant, it's the exact same stuff, but it doesn't um, sink. It doesn't squish and spread out. It will stay right where you put it. So you want to use self-leveling sealant like in the middle of something, say around an antenna or um, around uh, that skylight right there. But you want to use non-sag sealant near the sidewalls so you don't have like drippy goop all the way down the side of your trailer. So let me know what you think overall. Like I said, I think it's pretty decent. It's got the spot on the flooring. I hope you appreciate the fact that we went out of our way to point that out for you. And remember, if you need something like financing or if you have a trade you need hitching, we can do all that stuff for you. Don't even worry about it. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And have an A1 day, everyone.